And we're finally done shooting. I've got about seven days. The plant's looking great. The flowers are just blowing up all over the place. I got lots of footage with, uh, with the XM1 and quite a bit with this one over here doing the macro work using the regular background. And I think this is gonna turn out really nice. Um, I've got some really neat ideas of things I wanna try and do a green screen now. And as you can see, I this showed up in the mail a few days into the shoot. So I'm probably just gonna ditch the first two days uh, worth of footage unless I can unless I can get the, the keying to work correctly. But I'm really happy with how this went. Now it's good time to go ahead and turn this stuff off, take the cameras upstairs, dump the memory cards. This one's on iFi. This one is not. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the footage and see what's see how it looks. I'm really excited, in fact, if I just look at it here. Oh wow. This is gonna be really kind of neat so I can't wait to get this footage out and take a look at it so this has been really cool so now I just get to play around with this and see how I want to um, do the keying process and I can go ahead and start getting set up for the shiitake mushroom vlog that I have that I'm shocking right now so that'll be a lot of fun so let's take this upstairs so I finally got the results all loaded up and uh, I'm pretty happy with things are, where things are going. I'm kind of playing around a little bit with it. And as you can see here, this is just the frame. There's nothing that's been done to it yet. So once I, uh, I went already went through the key settings and when I activate it back on, there you go. It pretty much eliminates everything out. That's not what I was looking for. And I'm pretty happy with this. The uh, last time I did it, I was shooting much closer to the plant and uh, it was reducing the depth of field which was causing some out of uh, focus areas uh, just before and behind the plant and um, I was making it really difficult to do keying on this so now that I have uh, the entire thing in focus I, I definitely get a whole different experience uh, from using this and what I had been so if I go back over here you can see Here's the bat without the background, with the background. Now this is just a generic background that I threw up there. Last year, or last summer when I was doing a lot of hiking, I was stopping in a lot of places, getting a little bit of uh, video footage, a little bit of uh, um, photographs and stuff like that here and there, just to get some backdrop contents, because I knew I was going to want to have that kind of stuff to play with uh, as time went on. So looking at this, I mean, the obvious problem is we have this thing sitting in a pot here, and that just doesn't look too good. I mean, it really looks like it's just kind of stuck in front of it. So what I had done is I have gone into Photoshop, and right now Photoshop is probably still, no, it finished, it finished its job. So what I had done, let me pull this up real quick. I had actually gone in and ran a script that was gonna remove the pot. And you see this, it just kind of replaces it with this blue area. And here is a, it just finished this routine, but here's one of the first ones I had run through the action. And now we have this plant and it's sitting in here and it looks a little bit more natural, you know, and I can scale this up or down or do whatever I need to do with it. So I gotta play around with the size a little bit, see how that's gonna work. And then I'm probably gonna go ahead and plug it into a couple different settings. and. Just kind of get an idea what I can do with this, just experiment around. Um, I'm fairly happy with the movement of the plant and the time lapse, and I'm going to show you that footage here. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So you can see as it's going, um, I got really nice movement on the flowers, and the plant was doing really good in the basement. I mean, when I first got it, it was kind of saggy and not looking that great, and by the time I was done shooting, I mean, it had really perked up all the flowers had opened. So uh, it's really nice knowing that that's a, a good setup down there for this type of plant. Um, and then I also have a... Uh, this was the one that was done on the backdrop. And as you can see, it, it looks pretty good. There's one point where the plant kind of shifts a little bit, and I'm not exactly sure why. Um, you'll catch it here in just a second. Right there. And I'm not sure why it did that, but um, it, it's got some really cool, it's got some really good uh, movement here. Uh, this would be great to hold on to for bee stock material. I don't know if I'll ever end up using this or not. But what I wanted to show is just throwing an actual background in there it gives a very natural look. And I'm not sure what happened. I think that's because of the way I was shooting this area in the very back was kind of cast in shadow. I had that extra light on and it filled up the background nicely. 
But um, sometimes, you know, the great thing about this is I get these wonderful out of focus areas with bokeh and that also has movement. And that's something that I'm not able to figure out how to get to work with chroma key yet. So uh, once again, I, I think that mixing a, diff, a, a mixed bag between chroma key and natural backdrops, as well as maybe doing projection or other methods, you know, is going to be the best bet, you know, to really kind of mix it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play with this for a little bit. I'm going to get this guy plugged into several spots. Um, and then I'm just going to start uh, getting a couple different footage or clips with this in it and kind of experiment around. And uh, as soon as I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and add this and you can see that into the final result. But so far, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with the way that this went. Uh, I wouldn't mind shooting a little bit longer. I really enjoy shooting this plant. But right now I have a, a mushroom log that's going to be uh, sprouting in the next day or two. And I really need to get set up for that instead. And I got a lot of work for that. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you kind of see how the chroma key process on this works. I mean, this was not intended to be a tutorial. It only took me a few minutes to figure this out myself. So I think that if you wanted to try this, it's not going to be a very difficult thing for you to learn how to do it too. Um, I don't even think I mess around with online tutorials. All I did was I get the file here and then I grab into the keying and I go to ultra key and I drag that in and then I just kind of work on these sliders until I get the results that I'm looking for and uh, it, it worked pretty good so I'm pretty happy with this process as a whole. So uh, thanks for watching and keep tuned I'll be putting more of these out.